G'day, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to start with a, an apology. Uh, I never actually meant to finish off that engine work last time I turned the camera on. All I went down to the workshop to do was just make sure I had all the parts and kind of double check the timing and on the bottom chain and do that. But I kind of got carried away. I've been waiting for parts for a long time. Uh, I just wanted to get it done in the end. So. Apologies when you had one camera set up. Apologies the sound was terrible. Apologies you couldn't see half the stuff that was going on. But if you ever kind of try to get a project finished, you'll probably understand you just wanted to get something done. So that's how that went. Uh, so today, so the engine done for the moment. Next we need to work on the the gear change because we've gone from our automatic with our one of them to our manual with one of them so got some bits behind me um, so we have our shifter now I've gone and rebushed the shifter uh, as best I can I say as best I can for a reason uh, so we've got new bushes all nicely lubed, always better with lube, uh, because it would appear that this one, this, this shifter has already been modified uh, to be a bit of a short shifter, which is kind of interesting. You'll see the tower's kind of been cut down and this part's been modified. This is, this is the standard one, this is my new replacement one. Uh, but it's the wrong size to go on here. This one's going to be chopped at the bit of the top's been chopped off and put at the bottom. Um, yeah, so hopefully that won't cause us any issues and it might even be a bit of an upgrade, I suppose. Uh, yeah, but the rest of it turned out fine. It's got new bushes, a bit of a puzzle to take apart, put back together, but it's not difficult. Didn't make a video. Uh, yeah, just got all these bits here. That it all come out. So yeah, that's that's the first part. And of course, um, you can't be jamming it into gear without a clutch pedal. So we've got our pedal box from a manual car. So we got our brake pedal in the middle, clutch over, brake pedal and clutch. All right, yeah, brake pedal and clutch. Um, now I thought this whole unit was different to the automatic one uh, but it turns out it's not <coughs> you'll see we've got our, our brake pedal which is a conventional manual car size fits on there and here's our automatic pedal so it's like that but interestingly the, the mounting hole is in the same place on both and all the automatic one has got is an extra chunk of metal there and this as it is looks like an absolute nightmare to pull out of the car it's behind the steering column there's a fuse box in the way it ain't coming out and the one in the car's already up the place for the master cylinder and reading up online the most common way of doing this is to transfer the clutch pedal onto the existing box, mark up automatic brake pedal, um, put an outline of this, this rubber and cut that pedal down to size, jab it on, job done. Right, so this is our pedals as they stand, I'm going to start by taking back everything I've just said, these brackets are completely different, uh, we don't have the a bit for the master cylinder. Um, the bracket's different. We don't have the, the shaft for the clutch pedal. Uh, so we've got to take this bracket out. I think I just got. I, was, I had a look at this in kind of rubbish light this morning, and this thing up here uh, I took to be a part of the bracket, but of course it's not. It's just where the master cylinder should come through. So that's one easy bit. We can see that. We can even give that a, a poke out. Hang on, let's give it something to poke out. So that's, 
There we go, we get daylight out the other side, look. And that's where the holes for that go. So, at least that bit looks straightforward, but getting this uh, pedal assembly, put this in the way, this fuse box in the way. Load of aftermarket junk in there too. It's going to be heaps of fun. And um, yeah, I can't really film that, uh, so I'll do my best to get you some before and afters. Well, here's the before. Get you an after shot and uh, tell you how bad it was. So there's the hole we've just kind of pushed through that we've made for our master cylinder. We've lost some rubber bits somewhere. Oh, there it is. Left some rubber bits on top of the hot exhaust. Oh, yeah, we'll grab them at some point. Our master cylinder. Sits nicely in there. Too easy. See, it's already got the hose on it. And would you believe it? If you look at our brake reservoir, there's a wee tab on there we can break off and connect directly to that. So that's that's probably the easiest part of the whole conversion. So pop that out for the moment, and we'll get on with doing the uh, pedal box. Um, and you've seen our big clutch hose from Hell Brake Lines. Um, DAG hose supply, top guy. Uh, so that's going to connect this onto our shiny new slave cylinder. Uh, and I ended up pausing. That's clever. Now I've got, I already had a used slave cylinder. I could have. Could have used, but this one's a wee bit floppy in the got a floppy tip. This one's a much much firmer tip. Um, this one also has the habit of dropping off, which I would imagine if that dropped off inside the gearbox, I wouldn't be too happy. So I end up going with a, a new one, a Febby one, made in Germany. So yeah, so we're gonna make our gear change as good as we possibly can. So we've got new hydraulics. Didn't get a new master cylinder, they're easy to change. I cost quite a bit of money, so we did that. Uh, now one thing our friend the XI Recds told me to change was this clutch fork. And he said get a genuine one or a high quality one, Febby or whoever, but end up with a genuine one from original classic parts Volkswagen. So we did that because yeah, we're going to get this gear change perfect. And you may remember back to the gearbox preparation video. Uh, I, ended up, I re bushed this part, this um, release bearing sleeve. Uh, I changed the that wee bush, bear, bush oil seal in there. Uh, I also kind of wiped off some corrosion off here, but again, we've got a new release bearing. We better have a, a nice new surface for that to work on. So we've got a new one of these. This one's genuine, as with the clutch fork. These both came from Greece, of all places. That was by far the cheapest place to get these two genuine parts from. Right, so a bit of a progress update. That's still the uh, pedal box that needs to go in the car. That's the state of our interior at the moment. There's the old pedal box, still in there. Um, it's proving to be a little bit tricky to get out. Uh, all the guys online contradict each other as always. Um, we've had to take the steering column out. Uh, one guy said, take the cluster out, then you can undo a clip. And that makes no difference. Uh, problem is, this this tube's in the way now. Uh, steering, steering column tube, or whatever they call it. Uh, but the problem with that is you can't just undo bolts, because it's got two... Two shear head... Two shear head bolts on there. So I've started drilling off one. 
and then I'll drill off the other one. Now I can take this tube out of the way. And that tube's what we're caught up on. There. Yeah, then we can get that old pedal box out and uh, put the new one in. I think if I uh, yeah, get that tube out of the way, then it should be nice and easy. But yeah, so far it hasn't been that easy. Thankfully, Mark III Girl is pretty easy to take the interior out of. Uh, nothing is, I don't think I've broken any clips or anything else, so it should all go back together. Uh, of course, I was careful to mark rotation of the column, the steering wheel, all that kind of stuff so we get our clock spring and stuff back where it should be and hopefully not end up with a cockeyed steering wheel but yeah, to, you really have to get balls deep in this thing to get get that pedal box out but yeah we're almost there and uh, I'll show you when it's done okay so it's out finally, here's the old automatic one you can see all the scraping from what time it took me to get that out uh, Here's our steering column tube that had to come out. There's the two bolt heads uh, I had to drill off. Even with this detached, it was still pretty hard to get that out. Uh, so yeah, there's no way, um, even if I did just manage to squeeze this one out, the manual one with the extra bits and pieces, that would not have gone in. So. That tube, in my opinion, has to come out. Um, so yeah, I'll stick it all back in and um, we'll go from there. All right, so after the clutch pedal, um, we also need a shifter, which is over here. So as, you, as you've seen, I've already rebuilt it. Uh, uh, we just attached the cables. Um, now of course, I didn't take all these pieces out of the, the donor car. This I bought it as a, a kit, a complete kit. Uh, so there's a bit of a kind of jigsaw puzzle trying to get it all together and I'm missing a few nuts and bits. So uh, with the help of my big box of nuts, whatever else I've managed to kind of find the right lots of nuts that fitted, uh, locked like them in there. So we can get this in. Um, so the cables are in. Right, to put this on, you have to go underneath the car, drop down the exhaust, reach up, take out the automatic selector, put the new one in. I can't film that. Uh, I'll try and give you a before and after, show you what it looks like. But yeah, it's going to be another bit of a struggle. Uh, but yeah, whilst I'm in there, of course, we love whilst we're in there. It's obviously, you can't find it. Uh, dropping down that exhaust section. You can see the O2 sensors, so we're going to put a new one in uh, whilst we're in there. I'll do what I can to show you some of this. Uh, I haven't changed an oxygen sensor in probably 14 years. So um, we'll see if I mess this one up. But uh, yeah, I'll um, give you a quick look under the car, see what I... I can do for you there, uh, then I'll crack it off and see if I can show you something anyway. So uh, here we go. Right, so here's our catalytic converter, here's the heat shield, our gear shifters up above that heat shield. Of course the front of the exhaust is already loose and off the engine. I'm just going to come back to this bracket here, take the bracket off, under the bolts, um, see if we can shift that out of the way somewhat. Our oxygen sensor's up under there. So yeah, it kind of only really makes sense to do that whilst we're in here. It's kind of 20 years old, it's so probably worth doing. So yeah, I'll hook into it and take it from there. I'm going to try and avoid... I'm trying to avoid and separating any of this stuff unless I really need to. Otherwise, I've got to. I'll have to start finding new bolts for those and whatever else. So uh, I might have a new. I think I've got a new gasket for that anyway, just in case. Uh, but I'd rather not. Um, I don't want to create work for myself. So yeah, I'll um, drop it down, get the heat shield out of the way, and uh, squeeze that shifter in. 
I bet anyone in the UK or the US has never seen her. The underside of a Mark III Golf look this rust free. Ow. Even when the under seals come off, it's still not rusting, so that is the one well, one of many good things about living in New Zealand. Your junk don't rust. I'm just taking that bracket off and you see we've got a slight exhaust leak there, so it's kinda kinda handy we done that. So that's another thing we can fix up whilst we're in here. Those nuts came off just fine, I don't know what all the fuss is about. Yeah, so we're nice and low, so I'll just go and move it forward from the engine bay. I've dropped the uh, temperature sander wire down so we've got some slack. Alright, so with the heat shield down you can see the shifter. Uh, there's two bolts at the back of that, plus the cable. So I'll um, whip it off. Uh, so back inside the car, I had to take the con centre console out uh, because we've got this one nut here. Uh, there was also the shift lock cable. It kind of came up here, went around to the ignition switch. Uh, handy having the dash out, you can just take that out of the way. So we'll um, spin this one off and should be timber. I could find my 13mm socket. See ya. So yep, that's out of the way. And we'll um, get the new one in. Right, so here they are side by side, the order of the manual. And therein lies our next problem. You see our mounting holes are good at the back. But over at the front, they're quite different. Got a single stud, the one we just done did. Yep. On, on the manual. Now here's a quick look of under the car. As you can see we're going to have to do something to get it mounted. Uh, probably it's going to involve somehow putting a stud from there over there somewhere. Now surely there must be a way I don't know, I've never seen a manual car. There must be a way that the manual car does it. I can't believe they're a different body shell. Uh, if you've got any ideas, let me know. Right, so I think we're going to leave that episode there on a bit of a cliffhanger. We're going to leave it on a cliffhanger, there you go. Uh, so if, as always, I kind of look to my viewers for ideas because I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, so yeah, if you've got any idea how that should work, or what I can do to fix it nice and easily, let me know. Um, yeah, I'm sure I can work it out at some point, but um, yeah, it's been a struggle getting those other bits off, so my brain's a bit fried, so, so I don't know. Uh, let me know what you think about that one, and she'll go from there in the next couple of days, I guess, and see what's what. But um, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking by this one. This is a real kind of fiddly bits, which way harder than doing the engine. This, this is, engine was a walk in the park. This is a, don't know what this is. What's the opposite to a walk in the park? A run in the mud. This one's a run in the mud. Uh, but yeah, let me know if you can help. Comment, like, subscribe, get involved, subscribe. Uh, we're almost at 900 subs, thanks to Podget and Leggett Garage, he had a bit of a shout out, I don't know if you saw the video, but that kind of hit me 50 subs up overnight pretty much, so thanks Leon, top guy, one of my top mechanics on YouTube, which I guess means the world, the world, in real life, not just YouTube, uh, top guy, so yeah, comment, like, subscribe, and we'll see you shortly with hopefully a resolution, cheers.
Hey, give us.